number six, Taz Coolhan. Seven, Chad Daniels. Jersey number eight, Massimo Mori. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 2022 NRL Schoolboys Cup Grand Final. What an atmosphere here at Leichhardt Oval. Patrician Brothers of Fairfield taking on Hill Sports High. Both schools the best in the competition this year. And joining me right now is Phil Pryor. What a grand final awaits, Phil. Yeah, and the, it, I, I don't remember anticipation like this either, Pete. Obviously, uh, you know, given what happened last year, it's been a long time coming, this one. And uh, both of these schools looking to break fairly lengthy school World Cup droughts as well. Incredible. We're just seeing the pictures now of the schools in attendance. I don't think there'd be many pupils, Phil, at the schools right now. There is the starting lineup for Patrician Brothers of Fairfield. Let's go through their side right now. At fullback, we have Junior Fagalelli. On the wings is Lee and also Vuna. The three and the four is Lolahia and Ilavalu. The six and seven, Colhoun and Chaddy Daniels. And a very, very strong forward pack of Mari, Ayash, Miller, Funa Ayaluta, Alhazam and Myers. So there we go, the starting side for the Fairfield Patrician Brothers here in the 2022 NRL Cup Grand Final. Of course, Peter Maholland, what a name, Phil, in, in rugby league circles. We honour him this year, of course, with the competition named after him. Yeah, one of the greats uh, in terms of, you know, being a, an NRL scout, a talent manager as well, uh, former St. Greg's teacher. So his uh, Schoolboy Cup blood runs uh, runs very thick through this competition. There's no doubt about that, Peter. And, uh, yeah, look, we're moments away. How about the crowd that's coming into Leichhardt Oval? Nothing else matters for these students right here, right now, and their heroes are about to enter the arena. Indeed they are. Of course, this is the ultimate Western Sydney clash as we await now for Patrician Brothers of Fairfield as they prepare to take on Hill Sports who will be crowned champions? Of course, Pat's knocked out the 2019 winners, Westfield Sports High. What an absolute thriller that was last week, Phil. One point in it, mate. 19 points to 18. Both of those semis were just to die for in terms of clashes, and, and they went right down to the wire. And we can only hope uh, that the grand final has the drama that both of those matches did, of course. So, yeah, we cannot wait. And we, we know for sure that both of these teams have match winners because they proved that last uh, last start. Of course, we speak of the match winners for the Hill Sports High School. Look no further than the number six and the number seven in Tia and Ibrahim. And we turn the page, of course, Colhoun and Chatty Daniels for the Patrician Brothers of Fairfield. They are in red hot form. And what a moment now for both schools. Here they come out on the light cut oval. What a moment in the NRL Schoolboys Cup. The crowds are back. This atmosphere is going off. You can hear the drums, Phil. What great theatre. It's a sacred rugby league venue. There's no doubt about that. I can't think of anywhere better to host a game of this occasion. And we are only moments away as well. And the players would have run out and heard their fellow pupils cheering loudly. And that has to give them some kind of a boost that they're probably not all that familiar with in their young careers thus far. Okay. We're just standing by now for... The welcome to country, and then we'll stand by for the Australian national anthem. The field is absolutely in tremendous nick, folks. Yes. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if able, could you please be upstanding for the acknowledgement of country to be performed by Gemma King of Hill Sports High School, followed by the national anthem to be performed by Cole Hart of Patricia Brothers Fairfield. My name is Gemma King. I am from the Hill Sports High School and I'm a proud Doug woman born and raised on Doug country in the Hawkesbury. I would like to pay my respects to my ancestors who walked on country before me, those walking with me now and those who will also continue to walk with me in the future. Good luck to both teams playing today.
Australia fed beneath the radiant southern cross we'll talk with hearts and heads to make this come world of ours renown of all the lands for those who come across the seas We've boundless plains to share With courage let us all combine To advance Australia fair In joyful strains then let us sing Advance Australia fair a crowd of more than two to three thousand in here at Leichhardt Oval. The last minute instructions filled, the captain having right now to his charges, and we're almost there. What a build up it's been throughout the week from both schools. They've had we open training sessions, but now they are both ready for business. Who will be? Premiers at the end of one hour. Give us your tip, Pete. Oh, I think you can't go by the Trishan brothers of Fairfield, but you just never know, do you, Phil? Who do you like? Oh, it's going to go right down to the wire. I'll, uh, I'll go the opposite. I'll go Hills. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's cup for grabs. And we are almost there, folks. It will be Ibrahim. So the grand final, it's underway here on the Daily Telegraph, Community TV, and here's Blake Metcalf. He's been sharp this year, hasn't he? Signed on, of course, with the, with the Canberra Raiders. Looking for a first penalty here, but not coming. Mari getting off. They're out to the 40 meter line here. First set of six here in the grand final. As they again now hit hard with everything, vigor and all. Look to come to the halfway line. So good inroads here in the first set. The Hill Sports High, they're back out to the halfway line. Here's Tia putting in the kick downfield. Taken here right on the 10 meter line and this is Fager Lilly, Phil, and he's back out towards the 20 meter line. Yeah, good first set with the ball in hand there from the hills and a good kick downfield as well as now it's patrician brothers getting belted coming out there was godfrey Ilavalu. back to his feet now as they push towards halfway there's the biggest man on the field here at leichardt oval right now it's jordan miller one of the winning west tigers players from the harold matt's grand final and now there's a little bit of disagreement out there in the middle between these sides being buoyed by the crowd and referee Kieran Casey has had to come in and just pull these two sides apart plenty of feeling early on in this New South Wales School World Cup Grand Final Peter of course Jordan Miller he just touched on there he's a powerhouse front rower isn't he he's got a massive motor he was man of the match in the West Magpies Harold Matthews grand final which we covered on New South Wales Rugby League TV 
that right now tension in the grand final and a big cheerio to both schools taking our live coverage into their auditoriums great to have your support right throughout 2022 culminating here today in the Peter Ma Holland Cup Grand Final so there's Jordan Miller on the right hand side of the screen you saw there both uh, hookers having a chat to referee Kieran Casey there they are of course captains here today Peter as that venomous defense from the hills continues Pat's trying to work it back to halfway and there is some feeling in this one as Pats get to the end of their set now and kick it down field and it's retrieved well there at the back. Yeah, Metcalf was in two minds there, wasn't he? The fullback wasn't sure to go after it or he allowed Lubba Badi. Look at this defence in the middle of Leichhardt Oval. Grand final defence there by Ilavalu as they now come up the middle. Look at this again, not one, not two, but three in the tackle. And who was it? It was Jordan Miller in there again. Here's Patia. He's taken down here just short of the halfway line. So the Hill Sports High. They're about to rumble and rock their way over the halfway line. Good tackle there by Joshua Almazam. Now they look the right. Look for the kick now off the boot there of Tia. Fager Lilly does well. And he looks up. And who is there? It's Billy Scott. The captain taken down here 30 metres out from their own goal line. Yeah, three and a half minutes gone and the energy right now is at all-time highs from both of these sides. As Pats try to work it out of their own ends, that's Joshua Alhazen, the vice captain in this team. He's got a twin brother coming off the bench today as well. There's Big Miller once again getting on the front foot finds his front as well up to his own 40 as pats work it out of their own ends there's the little billy scott with a good dart out of dummy half and some post contact push as well right there fifth and last so the ball comes now to chad daniels who goes downfield and it's retrieved at the back by blake metcalf yeah, center of the field here, Phil. So they're looking to find gaps, aren't they? Through the middle corridor. The big Mitchell's in there and Miller. Now they again try to go out there to the Wayne Pierce Hill. Taken down here just short of the halfway line. Here's Metcalf again. He pumps it to the halfway line, just short by a couple of meters. They work it now through Diarani. Good run here by the lock forward. So the last tackle now for the Hills. In between fullback and the winger. Here's Fua. He looks up. He beat the first one, Fua. But he can't beat the second. And he's taken down here. Tackle number one. So a good grind early on in this grand final. Yeah, the defence has been top-notch from both sides. As now you see Corey Lee have his first carry out of dummy half five and a half minutes gone just that one stoppage so far so both of these sides will be breathing heavily at this point so an early kick downfield from chad daniels one of the stars in that semi and here come the hills out of their own end decent field position for hills sports high Starting off this set as Harry Hassett, the Australian schoolboys representative now, work, works his way up towards halfway through sets of hands. They go now just trying to ask a few questions out on the edge and there's some good space up over halfway now for the hills. And up the guts they go. Still a couple of tackles left in this set as well. It will be chipped over the top and trying to get it in behind Corey Lee it was Cassius Tia it was a good kick and well retrieved by the left winger for Pats he's done well Corey Lee played every game he's a natural player 
who can play many positions. We've come to know that right throughout 2022. Put him anywhere, he won't disappoint. Also creates a lot of chat from the back. So we're locked up here on the Daily Telegraph scoreboard. This is El Hazem. Takes play to the 40. Look for the kick now. Inside the 40. Colhoun sends it straight down the middle of the field. Here's Pritchard. He's got space to work. He comes into the possession there of Funa. And they take him down here just short of the halfway line. So both sides still feeling one another out early on in the in the grand final. We've had seven minutes of the match. Here's Patia. Played for the Australian schoolboys. We know that. Also a part of the Panthers SG ball side. He's going places in the game of rugby league. Right on the 30 metre line. Nil all. Again they scoot from dummy half. Looking around, aren't they? But there's Mari in the tackle. So deep numbers to the right. That's the way they come now. Diarani, lovely ball, needed to be. He's Pokia. He cannot get there. Great defence, great scramble there by Pats. Right on their own goal line, Phil. So there's Corey Lee. We know that he's a hell of a finisher. I fancy his chances of maybe putting one in that in that left corner for Pats at some stage through this game. But there's his defence on display as well on the left wing. Doing well in his opposite number, Sean Pockier, who scored the winner last week for the Hills as Pats now work it out of their own end. So a scoreless first nine minutes in this Schoolboy Cup Grand Final as Patrician Brothers Fairfield work it back up towards halfway. And finally, we have a relieving penalty in this game, according to Kieran Casey. And a chance now, really the first great opportunity for Paddies to attack in this ball game. And there goes the kick in the touch. Good kick, a gain of 20 metres. So nine minutes gone here on the Daily Telegraph scoreboard as Ilavalu. He takes the tap. He's strong, isn't he? Fast and elusive. As you can see there, he was able to offload the football at every opportunity. Here's Miller, the powerhouse, front rower. <laughs> He's damaging. He's brought down. Stands in the tackle. They'll go through the left-hand side of the park. Is there a try coming here? What a tackle there. Chaddy Daniels, welcome to the grand final. Ayash, dangerous, can he get there? He's within a couple of metres. So nil all. First points of the grand final. Up for grabs as Daniels, he finds a Miller. He's close, it's the last tackle. They've got to go to the right. Ayash finds Daniels. Here comes the kick. Well, his intention there, Phil, was to find the try line in goal. And now they got a penalty. 10 metres out from their own goal line. Yeah, you're not going to confuse a rugby league referee in, the, in those <laughs> circumstances, trying to drag someone back into their in goal. So a helpful penalty there and a good first defensive test from the Hills and what a kick for touch that was as well. Chewing up nearly 30 metres to get this set of six started. So one third of this first half now has elapsed. And it's Petteru Pritchard with a nice 10 metre carry. The left side centre of this Hills side. And another penalty, so that's going to help work their way back into opposition territory, the Hills. They did have a set down in that Pats red zone a couple of minutes ago, but outside of that, that has been really their only trip down into deep enemy territory. But here's another fantastic opportunity now for the Hills as Cassius Tia, the Roosters SG ball representative, finds touch just inside that Paddy's 20 metre defence. So we talk about the pendulum in the game of rugby league. Is it going back into the Hill Sports High School's possession here? 
They're inching their way closer, aren't they? With every surging run. Great tackle there by Mari. Chance to the right. Here's Tia. He goes himself. He beat one. He's got the try line in front of him. He'll get there, Willie. He'll get down low. Was a double movement. He's lost the football. He's lost the footy. Well, there you go. Cassius Tia. We came to know him in the New Zealand under 16s two years ago. A finalist, a grand finalist for the Roosters. And boy, Phil, doesn't he steer the troops around the park quite nicely? Yeah, he beat multiple defensive attempts there, but hats off to the referee, Kieran Casey. He was right on the spot. There was no one better on the field to make a judgment call on that one. And Cassius T are just inches short of the line. Great cover defense, great scramble by Paddy's. We've got a full start here at the scrum, so we're coming back and almost 13 minutes gone now and no score in this grand final. The there were nerves in that first couple of minutes and they'll only build if neither side can settle into this one and open their accounts. So it's St. Paddy's Patrician Brothers Fairfield coming out of their own ends. Being wrestled to the ground there is Josiah Funa Iuta. Now coming off the back fence is Big Miller once again. It's not just the size that's impressive, but the work rate as well. And he, as he still edges forward, about seven metres shy of halfway now. Through hands they go. There's Ibrahim again, just bumping away. That's Josh Al Hazem. Uh, Josh Al Hazem, pardon me. Back up to halfway, almost Bailey Myers. This is now the fifth and last for Pats. They're going to just try a little something different here, and it's not bad. Well, coming through was Taj Colhoun, and it's going back the other way. Metcalf got cut in half, but he's back to his feet, and he's still going up over halfway, finished off. And there was a little bit too much height in that defensive contact as well. So what a run that was from Blake Metcalf, and he wins his team a penalty at the end of it. Of course, he's the school captain. Blake Metcalf, and congratulations to him as well, picking up a contract with the Canberra Raiders in the NRL. It's a phenomenal effort. 18 years of age in his last year at the Hill Sports High. So we're still searching for points here in the grand final. Little Sonny. Member of the, the Cruella Sharks, Harold Matthews, grand finalists. That's where they are. A couple of metres away from the goal line. They'll look to swing it. Tia, great ball, there's the try. I think you'll find they're going to give it on this occasion. And Lababidi, he picks up first points on grand final day. The number two out there on the left wing. First try to the hills. 15 minutes gone, they're up by four points to nil. Alar Labibidi, the left winger, four hills, finishing the job there, the South's SG ball rep, and some nice ball playing there on the inside from Cassius Tia as well. Read that situation nicely. And finishing the job well there, Alar Labibidi. Well, he's a try scoring machine. And that's why, folks, eight tries this year in the Peter Mulholland Cup. That's how you do it. And look at the crowd over there assembled 20 metres out. As we see now, a chance for Blake Metcalf. Now, they don't come much tougher, do they, Phil, in the game of rugby league than this. He's brought the ball back right on the 20 metre line. He's just throwing a little bit of turf up there to just to see which way the wind's heading. But he does have the breeze behind him with this kick in the first half of the grand final. Cast your mind back to the semi. We saw Taj Colhoun land a couple from the sideline and that ended up being critical in the out, uh, outcome of that game. So right here, these points could be 
extremely important. He's got the distance. He's got it. What a kick from the sideline. Metcalf. He's got it on string so far in the grand final. 6-0. 13 minutes out from half time, Phil. Yeah, we've got multiple elite goal kickers out there uh, operating in both of these teams. And as we just spoke about, that could be crucial later on in this game. So 17 minutes have elapsed now in this first half. What a wicked bounce that took. And the flag goes up over there as well. So a perfect reply from Pats. So both of their kickoffs, including the one to kick off this grand final, have been nasty, finding grass and putting the hills under a bit of pressure. And a chance for Patrician Brothers Fairfield to hit right back here. And it's Yehia Ayarch about to receive this play the ball. So... Here go Pats, working their way close to the line. There's Mari, just a couple of metres short. Slowly returns to his feet. Through hands they go. Daniel's back on the inside. Al Hazen, just a couple of metres out. The vice captain of this Pats lineup, right underneath the sticks. Going himself, Arch. He's going to be held up. In fact, told to play it centimeters from that try line so open side they go in fact there's a dummy so this will be called held up it's matt al, al has him out there now st george sg ball rep so he plays it 10 meters out they work it to the right hand side and through sets of hands they go there's a little bit of space out there there's the offload Right on that far side, Noah Funa is ended up being put into touch. So great scramble defence there from the hills. And they hold out for the time being. It's still a clean sheet. They lead six points to nil. 19 minutes gone. And Pats so far haven't had the answers inside that opposition red zone. Of course, Noah Funa is a Cabramatta junior. He's a very quiet, humble student. Had the chance to go out to the school throughout the week and have a chat to most of the sides out there, players out there today, and they just couldn't wait to get out here onto Leichhardt Oval. School's absolutely buzzing with excitement. Finneraya Luta is over the top. Referee just telling them to go back to play the ball here right on their own 10-metre line. But the combination of Tia and Ibrahim and and Metcalf for the back has been instrumental in their success for the Hills this year as they barge their way towards the 30 metre line. So they're coming off that tremendous victory as we see now Metcalf up towards the halfway line over Erindale College last week by 22 to 18. What an absolute nail biter that was at Campbelltown. That ball did it go forward referee says no it floated and the referee was quite okay with that and that's where they are right on the halfway line so they need a good clearing kick now they're going to torpedo punt it straight down the middle corridor and who's back there it's Corey Lee as I mentioned he's played most positions in the back line this year for Pats as they now come forward to the 40, good solid tackle, but unfortunately it's against the rules in the rule book. Penalty to Pats here, Phil, 40 metres out from their own goal line. <laughs> uh, don't you love the tension of a grand final? You know, it's been bubbling away all week, and now it's here, and they've just, you know, they're just getting it out of their system, aren't they? Yeah, they're just getting to know one another up close and personal. Not a lot in that. But we uh, love to see the feeling in that. And it will be a Patrician Brothers Fairfield penalty. A chance for Colhoun to get Pats back inside opposition territory. And now referee Kieran Casey's just going to call out Captain Billy Scott to tell his troops to cool the Jets a little bit. So Jordan Utah, he's about to come out onto the field for Hills as well. Play for the Parramatta Harold Mats. 
He's only 16 years of age. He's the youngest in the grand final today. So congratulations to him. What a bright future. His dream was to make it into a grand final at Schoolboys Cup level. And his dreams come true today, Phil. Yeah, congratulations. And what a moment this is for so many students, of course, in this game. So it will be penalty going the way of Patrician Brothers Fairfield. Colhoun to click kick for the line. Gives that one plenty of height into the grandstand here at Leichhardt Oval. 22 minutes gone. First half, bringing it up and bringing it hard was Godfrey Ilavalu. Now, there he is. One of the other 15s into the game, Matt Alhazen. Back towards the middle of the sticks. It's Bailey Myers. The Bulldogs held Matt's representative centre of the park. Options both sides as Daniels through hands they go. Cole Hoon out onto the edge once again. They asked a few questions out there not that long ago. Lola Hia will play it. Cole Hoon again. Squares one up and put on his backside is Funa Iuta. Fifth and last tackle now. Daniels goes wide. Al Hazem bumps away from one. Links up there. That's a good little kick from Muaga Tia. And he, in the end, didn't quite get the roll. Muaga to, uh, to Tia. So both benches being utilized in the back end of this first half. And there's a great backstory to Taj Colhoun. Spoke to him throughout the week and. He owes a lot, he said, in his young life to rugby league. He was telling us that he ended up growing up in a foster care and footy had been helping him manage his perspective on situations that had occurred throughout his life and it helped him pretty much push through to become the best version of himself. So what a lovely story. And that's what rugby league, that's what sport in general can do. So make sure you get involved in sport, in rugby league. Here's Metcalf. Here's Tia. He's trying to offload the footy. He does offload the football. Back away to Metcalf. Little chip in towards the end goal. He tried to get it back. He couldn't. Cleaned up here right on their own goal line. As Patrician Brothers of Fairfield come away with it here. Through their winger in. Idnoa Funa. As I mentioned, he's fairly quiet in the classroom, but he, he leaves his voice. He leaves his passion for the rugby league field. Here's Ilavalu. He's strong. He's fast. And we know he's very elusive. Came out of the SG ball this year for the, for the Dragons. And what an absolute thriller it was last week. Pats 19-18 over Westfield. What a memorable moment. Right on the hooter. What was it? Only about three or four seconds to go. That field goal kicked them into the into the grand final today. Here's Miller. He's drifting across field. Miller. What a motor. When the motor gets going, that's what he can do. Taken down here 40 metres out. It's the last tackle. Back there now for Daniels. He says, boys, follow this. Into the waiting possession over there of Lubavidi. And he's taken down here, Phil, about 15 metres in from touch on the eastern side of the field. Yeah, good kick return there from the only try scorer of this game so far. Now it's Pedro Pritchard. That's a strong carry. As they work it out. And that's a good run from the fullback. Blake Metcalf. So this has been a good set. Worked well by their back three. Now up over halfway and looks like there was just a slight error as they were trying to get back to their feet. So a bit of a let off there for Patricia Brothers Fairfield because you get the sense that the Hills were just building some momentum there. It was a great set up to that point. But a cheap turnover will give Pats a chance to open their accounts before this first half concludes. How quick has the first half gone, folks? Just over 
Five minutes remaining on the Daily Telegraph scoreboard in the first half here of the 2022 NRL Schoolboys Cup. Great hands needed to be. Support on the left. Go themselves taken down here right on the halfway. Back away again now from Daniels. Here's Joshua Alhazm. He's a dynamic ball runner. Played for the Parramatta Reels as the co-captain in the Harold match season. He knows what big time rugby league is all about. Here's Miller again, the workhorse, the toiler of the pack. They work it again now. Colhoun, he's wiry, he's strong, isn't he? And just an, an elusive ball runner. Matt has, has him now. He's hard as nails. He always has a, a high work rate. He'll never let you down. Here's Daniels, cuts out one. Here's Lee, ball's gone without it. He's gone without the footy, and they've turned it over here, and the Hillsfield come away with it here, 20 metres out from their own goal line. Yeah, just and a bit of, just a bit missed times there. Ooh. as The whistle is blown, so Kieran Casey has to blow that whistle a few times. There's more feeling out there. Miller's right in the centre of it. Well, Little Sonny wasn't happy with Miller, now tensions are boiling over. Now, Albert Littasoni, he was the Sharks Harold Matthews grand finalist, and he's taking on Miller. I mean, that's <laughs> that's above your weight. It's good uh, luck with that. It's adventurous, and you see the touchies coming in here to have their say as well. Brody Barry and Nathan Hillier. So there was obviously plenty picked up in that exchange and frustrations would be boiling for Patricia Brothers Fairfield as well. They haven't been able to find any points in this first half as of yet, and there's only just over a minute remaining before Oranges. So Kieran Casey has a big job here just to try and settle things down in what's been a really spicy first half in this game. So no doubt he'll be having a chat with, with Jordan Miller after both touch judges give their side to the story. He's just had a, a powerhouse season, Jordan Miller. As I mentioned, he was man of the match in that West Magpies, Harold Matthews grand final winning team. Had an almighty day, an almighty game. And the touch judges have given their side of the story and he's calling over Jordan Miller. Here we go. So you weren't involved, you weren't involved in that How good's the coverage for this schoolboy cup grand final? Up close and personal right now. He's put him in the bin. So Jordan Miller has been sent to the sin bin here in the grand final. They're down to 12. And he will not be back until the eighth minute of the second half. Will there be a second to follow? Both sides are down to 12. Huge moment in this game as we see Albert Littasoni also make his way off the ground. We'll have to see what changes are made, of course. Lidasoni playing centre for this Hills lineup. For Miller, he had already come off for a, a, a quick stint 
a quick breather and then he worked his way back into the game. So Miller had already had the two stints in this first half. And now that threatens just to displace rotation plans for Paddy's heading into the second half as Hills work their way up over halfway. Good run there again from Mustafa Durrani. He's been strong in this game so far. Stepping off that left foot, Jonathan Ibrahim takes the tackle this time. There's Tia working it down that left edge. Now finding his way interestingly wide is Patea. So he'll play it a few metres out. Hills with a real opportunity to extend that lead right here. Fifth and last. Centre of the park. They work it back short side. Through hands they go. Back out to the try scorer. Tried to put a little grubber in behind Labadidi. And there's been a knock on at the end of it. They will have one more chance. Two score points before half time. So right on the 10 of the Trisham Brothers of Fairfield. And you have to say, by looking around the ground, they do have the support here in the grand final. But they're down by six points to nil. Hills about to uh, have another crack here with just over 20 seconds remaining in the first half here on grand final day. Another try here. That would put the cat amongst the pigeons, wouldn't it? And their coach, Scotty Jones, would be very pleased. So a full set coming with just over 18 seconds remaining. So Jonathan Ibrahim. There he is. Dishes it away to the left. Here's Tia. Back to Metcalf. He'll get there. Try two in the grand final. How dynamic is he? He's off to the Raiders. And now we know why. Slicing his way through. Chiming in with the footy. The big dummy. Put the foot to the accelerator. And here it is on the Daily Telegraph replay. Just take a look at this. Look at that beautiful ball. And Metcalf. Too big. Too strong. Too good. Yeah, nice ball playing there from Cassius Tia back on the inside, timing that ball out to Metcalf perfectly. And Metcalf just knew he had enough speed and enough space to back himself for the line. Does just that, and that is an enormous moment in this game. And a real heartbreaker there for Pats. They both had decent red zone opportunities in this grand final first half so far, but it has been... Hills Sports High taking full advantage. And the try scorer has a chance to convert where he has already put one over right on that far touch line, which would also take his personal tally to eight points. Well, they're not making game. it easy for him, are they, Phil? <laughs> the side. Two grand final kicks from right out on the touchline. Well, he's already had the dress rehearsal, hasn't he? So he knows what's required. And he's got pretty much the entire Patrician Brothers Fairfield school right in his ear as well over there. He loves pressure. Is he hearing it? Is he feeling it? Taking his time. The drums are beating. Hits it with the right boot. It's going to fall short this time. So no change, and that's half time, folks. What a first half of footy. Hill Sports High go to the break, leading by 10 points to nil on the Daily Telegraph scoreboard. And Phil, how did you make the first 30 minutes? Yeah, as, as we sort of alluded to, it's both teams have had their chances. Both teams have had trips deep into opposition territory, but it's been the hills out on that left edge that have found answers and points in this game so far. So, yeah, obviously plenty of work to do and it'll be interesting to see what coach Frank Pritchard with the Patrician Brothers Fairfield side has up his sleeve and trying to find some answers 
when they have their opportunities to attack. Yeah, of course, Frank Pritchard, what a phenomenal player he was for the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs, the Penrith Panthers. But right now, let's go down to the touchline. This is special. We've got Tony Solorano down there. Let's go down to him right now. It's all yours, Tony. From Hill Sports High School, Scott Jones, and also from Richmond River Fairfield, Frank Pritchard. An intense battle in the first half, Scott. What impressed you about your side? Oh, mate, just our resiliency. I thought we had a we under the pump a fair bit there, and the boys just kept turning up. So I hope another 30 minutes of that, and I'll be happy. Yeah. Good luck with this, this second half. Frank, uh, what does your team need to do in the second half to come back? Oh, I think we've just got to stay, you know, stay together, stay calm. Um, you know, I think a bit stage right the first half, but you know, it's another half of football, so. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Good luck. Half time here in the Peter Mole Holland Cup. Both coaches have had their thoughts. It's 10 0 at half time, but there's plenty still to go. 30 minutes time. I'm bringing in the all academic 13. These players have participated in the competition this year and were able to achieve some great, res uh, great results in the classroom. We've got four of those representatives here. We've got Jordan Faleono from Patricia Rivers Blacktown. We've got Ollie Sykes from Farrah Memorial Agricultural High School, Taimana Ellers from Hunter Sports High School, and Thomas Fletcher from St. Gregory's College. Jordan, I'll start with you. You've done some great things in the classroom, but also you're volunteering for St. Vincent de Paul, feeding the homeless. Talk to us a bit about that. Oh, uh, yeah, it just gives all the boys the opportunity to uh, go out and feed the homeless through school. Um, we go to this um, thing called Vinny's Van, and we go out and make sandwiches for the homeless in um, Parramatta and Mount Druitt. So, yeah, it's pretty good. It's so important, the work that you do off the field as well. And, Ollie, what's your favourite subject at school? What, what do you really excel in, and what do you enjoy? And why, what makes education so important and help with your footy? Uh, well, uh, I do four in a math at school, and, yeah, I love doing that. I've got great teachers. And um, the, like, why the HSC is so important is it gives me an outlet from footy and uh, another thing to focus on and improve on uh, while I'm away from footy to come back and try to improve on both. Great. Yeah. Yeah, very well said. And Taimana, you've been part of quite a few NRL programs as well, which has been really important. But the support network and family pushing you through in education and also rugby league, how important is that? Yeah, uh, family is a big thing to me. Um, yeah, they really support me in everything I do, and yeah, I'm just proud of who I am, and yeah, it's all I can say. You do a fantastic job, and Thomas Fletcher, you've probably got the hardest question. So my question to you is, how, what's the secret? How do you do it? How do you achieve such good results in the classroom, but also play at such a high level? Look, I think it's a bit, if you, if you love what you're doing, I think you're going to make and find the time to like have that time to have the work, so... I think if you love what you're doing, so I love footy and I, I find the time to do footy and do my academics. So I think that's the key to doing it. And also, this isn't your only accolade. You're named in the Australian Schoolboys for 2022, which is a fantastic achievement. Talk to us about that responsibility and also what that can do for your career. Yeah, that was kind of a shock making that team. Eh? But um, I think that's a huge stepping stone to... Like, what, what all us boys want to do, we want to play NRL, so I think that's a great stepping stone to make it there, so hopefully that can lead me and that can give me, that can give me, um, that can teach me new things to get to NRL one day, hopefully. Good luck with that. And also, Jordan, back to you, your team played Hill Sports High School, who are currently leading at halftime, 10 nil. look like they may have one hand on the trophy. Talk to us about Hill Sports High School and what makes them so good. Yeah, they're a good, tough team. They're all older boys. They just stick in the game. They know how to play and they just stay on the grind there. You know, they got experience in the competition and we were a younger team this year, so I think that experience just got them the win. Exactly. And we've got, of course, Thomas is in year 12, Jordan's in year 12, Ollie's in year 12, Taimana's in year 11. Guys, what's the plan for next year? Any ideas? What, what do you sort of want to go into? I know rugby league's obviously a key focus, but uh, what else would you, maybe starting with you, Jordan, do you have a, an area you want to study next year? Oh uh, yeah, I just got um, early entry into ACU Blacktown for a double degree in nutrition science and sports and exercise science. Um, and then I'm also working as a barber as well, so yeah. Very busy man at the moment, but well done. Congratulations on that early offer. How about yourself, Ollie? Ah uh, yeah, um, probably a degree in uh, legal and uh, business, uh, in law and business, sorry, at um, Bond University next year. I'm pretty keen to go up there and yeah, uh, work up there on the Gold Coast while I'm doing that, so that'll be great. Fantastic. Plenty of great opportunities already. What about yourself, Taimana? I know you've still got one more year off school, but what are you thinking in terms of 
what could potentially be on the horizon? Yeah, so obviously finish school first, then potentially become a physiotherapist in the um, next couple of years. So yeah. Physiotherapist, it's a good idea. And uh, Tom, what about yourself? Uh, probably next year I have a gap year, but <laughs> after that, um, I think I'll do something with like sports science or physiotherapy, something to do with, so I still stick around with the sport, I think. Well, I'm going to Europe with the wife next year, so I don't think I'll see you over in Europe. Well, I maybe. No, <laughs> no. But gentlemen, 10 nil at half time. Hills, they're a strong side. Uh, Fairfield Patrician Brothers have got quite a bit of support here. Do you think that Pats can come back or do you think Hills will win? Uh, I think Hills are going to win. Uh, Hills for Jordan? I just hope the boys come out firing. Yeah, versus both teams this year. So I know what they, they can do. So I just hope it's a good second half and they get into another arm wrestle. What about yourself, Tamana? Uh, it looks like Hills are dominating at the moment. So yeah, I'll go with Hills. Fairfield for the upset. They're coming back. I'm calling it. They're coming back. They're coming back. Still only two tries, so still plenty of this game to come. Yeah, oh, Fairfield, yeah. Fairfield, there we go. So we've got a split panel. Two for Fairfield and two for Hills. It's so close. A great crowd in here this afternoon, and we're about 30 minutes away from crowning the 2022 Peter Mulholland Division Champions. Of course, this te these, the winning school will play the winner of the Northern Division up in Queensland, which could be either the Ipswich State School or St. Ignatius College as well. So there's one more game still to come, but they're going to be representing New South Wales. So I know everybody here, doesn't matter what happens at the end of the game, they'll all be supporting the winner of this game in future honours. I'm Tony Salerno. That is our halftime show here on the Daily Telegraph live stream. When moments away from the second half, the trainers are getting ready to come out again. The coaches have said their instructions not too far away. I'm going to throw it back up to Peter Jolly in the commentary box for what's going to be a cracking second half. Uh, fantastic stuff, Tony, down there on the sideline at halftime. And Phil, as we come back here and we look at the crowd here, what about, what about Tony's jacket? <laughs> Mate, he has got that press. Doesn't he look tremendous today? I've known him for a long, long time, and he's never looked so good. He's uh, lapping it up down on the sideline, it's fair to say. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit jealous now. I want to be yeah. down there as well. I'll tell you what, where does he get the jacket from? That's <laughs> straight out of the NRL uh, dressing room, I think. He's looking incredibly sharp down there, as are uh, uh, plenty of the students here today. Well, Put here's the, the shots of the crowd. Uh, Phil and uh, look at that over there on the on the Wayne Pierce Hill. I'd say half the schools here, mate. Yeah, at least the, and the the noise that's been coming from that far side of the ground as well has been exceptional, and it's given this game so much life. And I, I think that's been part of the thing, which is getting both of these sides just really revved up as well. Of course, there have been a few moments in that um, first thirty minutes when you know things threatens to boil over but uh but yeah there's, look there's been no shortage of energy as we see some of the highlights from that first half that was a real hammer blow to pat's chances in this game the the blake metcalf try right on half time a nice set play peter and look at our cameras right around the ground today this angle sensational there he goes the boy that's off to canberra Wow, and look at his teammates. There's Ibrahim behind him. They knew going into half time that that was pivotal to give them a 10 points to nil lead here on the Daily Telegraph scoreboard. And don't forget, folks, you'll be able to grab an online edition copy in the wrap up at dailytelegraph.com.au and read all about this game within the hour of full time. The Telegraph doing a great job as always. Uh, they're having some fun over there in the sun. As far as weather goes today, Phil, beautiful day, isn't it? 18 degrees, not much wind to speak about. They're predicting rain tomorrow. So yeah. luckily we had the grand final today. It was perfect and a perfect rugby league conditions as well as we sort of emerge from the end of winter into spring. That's when you want to be playing footy. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's finals-like climate. Uh, it's obviously plenty of club competitions and the NRL is approaching that finals portion of the, the year as well. So 
it's uh, it's ideal that we we get to enjoy this New South uh, NRL Schoolboy Cup final at this time of year as well as we see now Hill Sports High coming back out onto the field now and you wonder what kind of tactics will be employed by the Hills and coach Scott Jones given that they, they do have and hold a 10 point advantage into this second 30 minutes so it needs to be a tale of two halves for Pats and we know they can score and strike from anywhere on the field. They're the intercept kings as well. And Hills know that 10 points to nil, maybe, just maybe not quite enough to take out the grand final. So the second half here at Leichhardt Oval, you're with Peter Jolly and Phil Pryor in the NRL commentary box. Sit back as the next 30 minutes in 2022 gets underway and with the first touch here it comes back to Funarai Aluda she's very dangerous on the right edge played a lot of footy this year in the Harold Matthews we got to know him on New South Wales Rugby League TV Mua Guatia now sets it up here's Daniels he finds Joshua Alhazam. Another one from the Parramatta Eels. Going places in the hierarchy. Taken well into the breadbasket. There are Blake Metcalf. And he runs straight into the brick wall there. Hit hard there by Matt Alhazam. So here come the Hills. Out of their own end. That set of six started well by Metcalf, and that's Harry Hassett, the Aussie schoolboys representative. As they, in no time at all, work their way back to midfield. Playing it now, Jonathan Ibrahim. And good run there, straight up the guts. Luron Patea. They're only 26 metres out from that Pats try line now. TR with a cutout, and there is a bit of an overlap as well, but it has travelled forward the pass. Well, so, Labadidi, who already yeah. had the one try in this game so far, he won't be adding to his tally right there. Gee, provides plenty of strike, doesn't he, out here on the on the left edge. Labadidi. I know that the, the South Sydney Rabbitohs They've got an almighty wrap on the kit. Leave school at the end of the year. And that's been the difference so far in the game, Peter, as well, hasn't it? Cassius T are taking it to the line down that left edge and finding results. There was the overlap there, but just not quite executing on the pass as Daniels now takes a dummy. Yeah, very versatile, isn't he? Chatty Daniels. He's very clever. He loves to take on the line. Gee, scored a, a crucial try against Westfields, didn't he? Last week. They're back to the halfway line here. As Pats, Joshua Halazam, surging down to the 40. So three minutes gone in the second half. This is Matt Alhazam. Generates great D, doesn't he? Brings in three or four over the top. And now they're going to get a penalty here. Just going a little bit too high. So they're going to probably take the tap here. So Colhoun doesn't want to muck around with a does he, Phil? Yeah, building some nice momentum there. Both the Alhazam twins as well. Oh, what a connection that was on Josiah Funa Iuta who's coughed it up and what was such a promising build-up ends with disappointment there for Patrician Brothers Fairfield the defense from Hills so far in this game has been elite so that's where they are right on the 40 they come up the commentary edge and there's the defense over the top by Funerai Aluda so they're still down to 
12 men, both sides after plays were sent to the sin bin in the uh, first half. Of course, I'm referring to Little Sonny and also big Jordan Miller. So it's still 12 on 12 for a couple of more minutes here in the grand final. As Utah now, he takes play down to the 40 meter line. So it's the fifth and the last. As Metcalf, little chip over the top. Just a little bit too deep, but there he is again in the tackle. Blake Metcalf, if he's not throwing dummies, if he's not scoring tries, Phil, he's putting little chips over the top and coming up with tremendous defense here on their opposition, the Pats, as they come now forward to the 40 meter line. Taken over the top here, of course, by Diarani. So a couple more left up their sleeve in this set of six. Back to Myers. Part of the Canterbury Bulldogs, Harold Matthews. He was the player of the year this year. He's just dedicated, isn't he? He's committed. Here's Ilavalu now. Taken down right on the third. It's the last tackle. Back to Funa. He's going to set it up now for Colhoun. Where's Metcalf? There he is. And takes a tremendous tackle there by the big number 11 in Funarai Aluda. As we see now, the Hills come back out towards their own 30 meter line field. Yeah, bringing that one out for the Hills, Pedro Pritchard. And yeah, what an impressive display it's been from the Hills fullback. Here he is again, Metcalf. Enormous work rate and showing some class as well. Every opportunity he gets. Slow play the ball as he returns from off his back. So an early kick here and he's going to turn them around as well. Now did he One kick that? One bounce and I over think that's the line. a 40 20. What a nudge that was. I'm pretty sure he kicked that from inside the 40 and he has. Cassius Tia and that right boot. That's huge. Well, I understand we don't have the paint lines on because we've got a soccer match in the days ahead. But if they can score a four-pointer off the back of that 40-20, Pats will be in for it. Now they come away now to Squire. They've got numbers to the right. It's just a matter of putting it through the back line. Comes away now from Scott. Comes short. Ibrahim offloads. He's the general, isn't he? He'll go to dummy half. Now away. Offloads at short ball. It comes back to Ibrahim. Can he get there? I think he's got there. Try three. Oh, they've got one hand on the trophy now in 2022. Thanks to community TV. Yeah, just on the back foot there defensively Patricia Brothers Fairfield and Hills took full advantage and they've got enormous ascendancy in this game now off the back of that Tia kick and that short ball as well so Tia he's had a hand in pretty much all Hills sports highs points so far in this one and he links up with his halves partner there Ibrahim was going to always be too tough to stop and there's the shots now of Pats. I wonder what they're saying. I think it's pretty basic. They just need to find their way up the other end of the field. Now, I'm sure the message from uh, Coach Frank Pritchard at halftime would have been, let's not, let, let's not get too urgent too quick. Let's try and get back into the grind and get back into this game. But you'd have to think now, 14, possibly a 16-point margin. Now's the time to take some chances and put the foot down so here's Blake Metcalf straight over the black dot another two points here Hills on fire in the NRL schoolboys cup for 2022 another two points to them will they be hard to stop from here yeah they sure will 20 minutes left there's Metcalf as you see I mean how about Canberra Raiders fullback stocks right now with obviously Savage at the top grade and Metcalf coming through the ranks at a younger age as well as we see Paddy's go short with the restart the hills are all over it out there it's Harry Hassett the Penrith 
Jersey flag and Australian schoolboys representative. And it's been the, the big names and the big players standing tall for Hills Sports High so far in this game as well. In possession once again, working their way back to midfield. Hassett once again and a penalty off the back of it. Harry wanted another carry and he gets the result as well. So T is going to send this one into touch and send his team deep back into opposition territory. A chance to potentially ice this ball game as well. So good kick for touch. Right on the 40 metre line. So they're getting their fair share of possession here. Up by 16 points to nil. Three tries. Two conversions. To Blake Metcalf. Here's Tia dishing it back. For Tia. As I mentioned, play for the Australian schoolboys in the under 16s on the left hand side. Back to Metcalf. Geez, nuggety, isn't he? Taken into the ground by Ilovalu. Now, was that helped out? No, says the referee. Well, that all came to the tremendous tackle from the Pats, just forcing the error field. Yeah, Metcalf lifted right up and then dropped. Referee Kieran Casey didn't have a problem with how Metcalf was. Uh, put to ground and he's just coughed up at the end of it and Kieran Casey was perfectly okay with the exchange so Patrician Brothers Fairfield with the let off there although they are of course camps deep inside their own territory they're going to have to try and create something in a hurry so more changes Big number 13 for Paddy's Bailey Myers is now taking a breather. And his leg speed through the middle of the ground has been important so far in this game as well. So it looks like big Jordan Miller is back into the game. So it's back to 13 on 13 as well. And he straight away he's putting his hand up for a carry. You can see him lurking there in the middle, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't miss him. You'd be able to see him from Mars. That's how strong and how much of an impact he makes on this side. Here's Joshua Alhazm. He missed a fair bit of the year. Here he is now, Miller. Look at the run. <laughs> Took four of them. That's the halfway line. Comes back away now again to Colhoun. There's Patia. So it's the last tackle now. Daniels. So where's Metcalf? There he is. He's drifting across field, but he looks up and he runs into a brick wall. Three over the top there from Pats. Right on his own 20 metre line. So grand final day. 2022 folks, three tries to nil. 16 points to nil. On the Daily Telegraph scoreboard brought to you by Community TV. This is the fourth year the Daily Telegraph has been riding the Schoolboys Cup Rugby League. Now they're well inside their own 40. Last time they were down here, they came up with a 40-20. But this time they've kicked it out on the full. So it's going to be a changeover. Changeover to Pat. Now we talk about key moments. Perhaps this could be one of them if Pat's can find their way up the other end of the field here Phil. That's the moment that Pat's needed in this ball game. Cassius Tia he's barely put a foot wrong so far he's been one of the best players on the park. He just tried to bite off a little bit more than he could chew there and this could be the moment for Pat's to try and work their way back into this game and build some momentum as well. There's Massimo Mari. The Bulldogs Howard Matt's rep number 8 jumper. There's Jordan Miller he's front row partner met front on but he got the offload away somehow unreal stuff here's Yeha Ayach almost up to that hills 10 meter line they need something right here Al Hazem he's been massive for this Pats team so far he's wrestled the ground only a few meters out Pats 
Daniels as they go through hands. Colhoun off that right foot. Colhoun almost for the line. He does get the offload away. And that attacking raid comes to an end. But there's a couple more opportunities for Pats. Out of acting half. Ayarch goes himself. And Pats have points. It could be game on here at Leichhardt Oval. Patricia Mothers Fairfield, they work their way back into this game. And it's the captain, Yehia Ayarch, who gives them a sniff. Well, he's cool as ice. High football IQ. And talking to their coach throughout the week, they say that he could well be the next Cameron Smith. That's a big rap. But how does he read the game? Well, he reads it very well, doesn't he? The SG Ball representative from the Parramatta Eels. That was a captain's try. We spoke about key moments in the match. That was their time. And now, are they clawing their way back into the grand final? Yeah, I hate to obviously dwell on the negatives as well, but Cassius Tia now will be really disappointed, of course, with that, uh, that kick up the other end, which gave Pats the field position they needed. So... We'll have to keep a close eye on his response. He's had his hands in everything for Hills, of course, so far in this game. Colhoun, he was incredible off the tee in that semi, as we alluded to in that first half. Although he's pushed this one just across the face. So the score stays at 16 points to four, but Pats, they have worked themselves back into it and back to just the two scores in this game. Still plenty of time as well. 15, 14 minutes left to go. So 12 points in it. It's community TV. And the crowd, I'll tell you what, half the school's out here from the Pats. If they ever want to shift the momentum, they've got the crowd support, the school support. It's game on here in the grand final. And there's the kickoff. We've got 13 minutes remaining. And the gap, it's getting a little bit closer here in the grand final as they now look to shift it through the middle corridor. And that's exactly what they do to the roar of the crowd. Listen to the crowd. They're lifting him with every run. That's what's required. As it comes back away now, again the Miller. He's looking to come into it, isn't he, the big fella? There's the captain. Offloads it. Here's Daniels. He'll run. He's through. Can he get away from the second? He's taken down here. Just a couple of metres in from the eastern touchline. They're looking around again. El Hazem. He's been dynamic, not just today, but for the entire competition. That's the last tackle now. As Pats thump it downfield. Up it goes, they've lost the ball, it's going to be play on, this is going to be a try if they can get there. They've got there! What a beautiful grand final try! That was incredible! Noah Funa! The Cabramatta Junior, they say he's quiet, but he's not quiet now. They're roaring towards the back end of this as we go to the replay. There was the mistake. Johnny on the spot. Metcalf couldn't get him. And there's the try that's put them back into the grand final with 10 minutes remaining. Opportunistic there from Furner, and you have to put that down to the momentum, I think. Just Lava Beta just reading it wrong in flight and coming through with a nice chase. Noah Funa to give Pats more than a sniff now. This kick for goal, of course, crucial to get Pats back to within a converted try. But you just have to feel like the crowd on the far side here at Leichhardt Oval play, has played a part in that score given the momentum that Pats are riding right now. So Colhoun from the touchline. This one, he's got it on the string, has he? No, just pushes it to the right. What a grand final we've got coming up, folks. 10 minutes remaining. 
Wow. I hope this crowd atmosphere is going through to your auditorium or wherever you might be watching our grand final day coverage. Crank up the data. This is going to be a nail biter eight point ball game, Phil, with just over 10 minutes remaining. Yeah, obviously not the response the Hills were looking for after conceding points. Back to back tries now. It's Pats with all the momentum, and 10 and a half minutes is going to feel like a really long time for Hills Sports High as well. As we see their fullback Metcalf kick off, he kicks it oh. deep as well. What a response that was with Zaydis. Muwaga Tatia uh, unable to come down with that one near his own dead ball line. And now they're going to have to drop it out, Pats. So there's, there have been problems returning kickoffs from both teams on that side of the ground in this game so far, which is a, an interesting side note. And Pats are going to get this one height as well. Look at the chase coming through as well. It's been knocked on and it's been turned over. It ends up in the hands of Jack Lee. They needed that, Pats. Well, that was quite impressive. That breeze is behind Hill, so they allowed it to go high into the air. And they've come up with it AFL style. And they've come back away with it now through the middle corridor. Now they're attacking. You can see the pendulum. It's swinging. It's swinging back into uh, Pat's favour here. Muawagatia. He's a clutch player. They also call him the game breaker. Back to Daniels. Out it comes. Al Hazem. Can he offload? No. He's brought down 10 metres away. He'll get to his feet slowly. Penalty. Penalty to Pats here. Leg pull. So they're not going to muck around here at all, are they? They're going to take the tap. Why not? They've got the ascendancy. Back to Miller. He's close. Can he get there? Miller. I think he's got there. The powerhouse. Front rower has got a grand final try. 16-12 on the community TV. Wow. What an impact. What an impact by Jordan Miller. He's back. He's back from the sin bin, and he's back with a bang. And the tackle before you saw him with some ball playing as well. He's going to be some player, Jordan Miller, off the back fence, get, getting it there and saying, give it to me. It's taken three and four tacklers to put him down all day. He's still looking to get the arm free, but that time, all he was thinking about was the try line. What an effort that was. Well, you could actually count. There was five Hills players trying to stop him. Take a look at this on our front on replay here. They ended up taking the tap 10 metres out. Let's roll the tape. Here he comes. Big bad Jordan Miller. Thank you very much. Well, you could see the pendulum. It was swinging and shaking. The funny thing is you could, you could see that hit up from a mile away as well. Yeah. Miller started at about the 15 metre line and said... I'll take this one. And the Hills players, they still couldn't stop him. Goes to show just the strength and obviously the, the size, as you can see. You don't have to be here in the flesh to, to see the, the brute size and force of that man. But he's going to be some player. I mean, he already is. And he's only 17 years of age. Wow. Here's the kick. It's a beauty. Straight over the black dot here at Leichhardt Oval. The grand final. It's coming alive. Pats, they've gone bang, bang in the space of three minutes. Yeah, Col Colquhoun finally gets that radar working. Obviously had missed a, a couple of earlier ones. And right now, he will have to obviously put that behind him. They do find themselves two points down. Three tries apiece but it's Pats with all the momentum. So still plenty of time left. And for the third time in about a five or six minute span, the Hills have had to have a chat about what went wrong defending their own try line. So a huge couple of minutes here for the Hills to try and work their way back into this game as Metcalf kicks off. Not as deep on that occasion as now Miller gets one a little bit wider, breaking more tackles, Miller. Up to his own 20. Finally, someone went down low and just chopped his legs from underneath him. This is a good set as well. 
So far, ball in hand from Pats. Myers is back out there. Was happy to run that one pretty straight and not rely on that fancy footwork that he's displayed so far in this game. Pushing it out to this right hand edge, just trying to create something over halfway now. Sione Lola here. So back in field. Jack Lee, fifth and last, plays at 40 out from that Hills line. Miller through hands. Colhoun tries to find grass in behind. He does, but it was a nice clean bounce back there for Sean Pockier. Yeah, Sean Pockier ended up finding himself into the grand final today after C.O.C. Kalidi succumbed to a leg injury, we understand, but what about the tension around the ground? This is grand final day. This is epic. They've lost the football. They've lost the football. Hills 40 out from their own line. Patrician Brothers of Fairfield. They are only down by two, but is it their time now? 30 metres out from the opposition's goal line. Rugby league's a, a funny game, honestly. For the first 40 minutes, the Hills had all the momentum, all the ascendancy, and now you, you have a look at the site here at Leichhardt Oval. Every single Patrician Brothers Fairfield student is on their feet and their team is riding the momentum. Four minutes and change left in this game. Pats down by two points. And they go down that left edge with Godfrey Ilavalu. Now back in field. Ayarch with a carry. It brings Muwaga to Tia in at dummy half. It wasn't the cleanest of play the balls, but we will continue with Myers. 10 metres out, centre field. Colhoun wants it to the right. Shifts it out to that right edge. Daniels with the wraparound. He's lost it. Great defence out on that left wing there from the hills. And finally, they put a stop to a Patrician Brothers Fairfield attacking raid in this second half. And it was Blake Metcalf again, the fullback, with that tremendous tackle, which denied them any possibility of getting closer to the white stripe. So the scrum will pack down here, 10 metres out. And going away to collect the footy is Jonathan Ibrahim. What have we got? Three and a half minutes remaining. On the community TV scoreboard. As we see now, Metcalf, he comes short. Hill Sports High back slams. Great defense over the top here from Ilavalu. Lovadidi now, he takes play towards the 20. So they're struggling, the Hill Sports High, to come outside their own 30 meter line. Now they try to put the foot to the accelerator, but they can't get past their own 40, can they? Here's Metcalf. Picked up a try. He loves big time pressure. Two points in it. Charge down. He's a chance now. Al has him. Can he put them to the front? He dives towards the Premiership. Joshua Al has him. Incredible! Leichhardt Oval! The foundations! They are shaking! Patrician Brothers of Fairfield! They've gone to the front with two minutes remaining! We talk about moments in football! We talk about big moments in Rugby League! Well, moments! Do they come much bigger in grand final football than that? Joshua Alhazam, he has put the sky to the front and towards the Premiership. Yeah, incredible. And it's funny because it was Jordan Miller and Joshua Alhazam, the two doing chase there, putting pressure on Cassius Tia. And they've been probably Pat's best two forwards today. When they needed runs and they needed answers, it's been those two. And now they've both put themselves 
on the score sheet and now put themselves in front in this game with just a couple minutes left. What a ridiculous comeback it has been in this second half. Down 16 points to nil, four unanswered tries. Just insane. Just an insane last quarter of rugby league here. Ah, Patrician Brothers of Fairfield. The school hasn't won the competition for 30 years. Are they about to break the drought? Taj Colhoun. He kicked them into the grand final last week at Campbelltown. And today, he's kicked perhaps the last penalty goal of the grand final as well. One minute remaining. Ooh, what a classic grand final. Yeah, and it ain't over yet. All of a sudden, it's obviously the Hills that are going to need to show some urgency. And Blake Metcalf is going to go the short kickoff. It's questionable whether it goes the 10. It's going to travel out on the full. And that could be just about game over Red Rover. A penalty back on halfway for Patrician Brothers Fairfield. And now, of course, they're not thinking about going quickly at all. I think about trying to soak up as much time off the clock here and wait for the final siren. And Miller, he's going to take the tap and he says, boys, follow me. He's been in the sin bin, but he's been up there in the top three best players out there on the field for Patrician Brothers of Fairfield in today's grand final. 15 seconds remaining as Jordan Miller, the second last touch possibly in the grand final. The countdown is on. Patrician Brothers. Here's Lee. And there it is. It's all over. It's been 30 years since their last premiership. 30 years later, they have come to Leichhardt Oval and they have knocked over the Hill Sports High School. What an absolute epic, epic grand final. The final score, 20 points to 16 in favour of Patrician Brothers of Fairfield. What a match, what a grand final. Yeah, by my count, that's a 30-year cup drought over for Patrician Brothers Fairfield. Dating back to 1992, their sixth and final cup until today. So what a moment it is for Patrician Brothers Fairfield and so many of their students were here to witness it as well. Just unbelievable scenes and one of the most incredible comebacks, not just in schoolboy cup history, but in... in frankly in rugby league history given the moment and the momentous occasion that this was just completely insane Peter what a comeback what a story what a headline what a player there he is big bad Jordan Miller sent to the sin bin but who's got the last laugh? Fair to say it was an eventful uh, match for, for Miller. Let's go down to the touchline. Here's Tony. I'm Tony Slaughter here with man of the moment. Josh Al has him. Josh, what a charge down for the try score to win the game. Talk us through the moment. Look, all you have been talking about hard work and those one percenters. I was puffed, man. Well, you know, we spoke about it in the sense get that one percenter. I decided to rush off for that ball, rush off for that kicker, put pressure on him. And you know, we got the we got the points, man. It's just that the, we've spoken about it all year. Hard work, perseverance, man, and that's how that's what got us to win today. And how were the boys feeling? You went down 16-0 in the middle of the second half. First of all, what did Frank say at halftime, the coach, to get you back into the game? And then how did you get back after going three tries down? Yeah. Frank's all about the energy, man. When we got into that sheds, we sat down, we spoke to each other, we, we reset it, and we thought about our jobs. Every single person did their job, 
and we spoke about that change in energy when we got out there. We changed our energy. That's what won us the game today. All about energy and that change, the change in the momentum. Hey Josh, turn your head over there, mate. Have a look at that. What, what, how does that make you feel? How does that help you get back to the camera? But have a look just quickly. Look at everybody chanting. What does that do for the team? Did you feel them out there? Were they the different? We felt them all, all day in those tough moments. On the trial that those D sets, we've been working on them all year. The crowd, man, our, our, our school men just got us over the line, man. Without them, man, oh, would have been, oh, I've lost my breath, sir. Yeah, uh, no, well, congratulations, Joss. I've held you long enough. Go celebrate with your team. What a final, one of the best we've had for quite some time. We'll be having the official presentation very shortly to officially crown the winners. But Patrician Brothers Fairfield are the 2022 Peter Mulholland Cup champions. Yeah, well done, mate. And congratulations to Joshua Alhazm. Wow, what a moment. Look at these pitches, folks, coming out of Leichhardt Oval. They have just won the 2022 NRL Schoolboys Cup Grand Final. Well done to Patrician Brothers of Fairfield. This is what sport is all about. How good is this? Not a bus left in Fairfield this afternoon. They're all here on a day of train strikes. Well, we were lucky to get the bus. But this is what it's all about. We're just waiting now, Phil, for the, for the presentations. So let's go to the highlights of the grand final. And this was one of them. Yeah, that's the thing. It was all hills even coming out of halftime. They were the first to hit the scoreboard in this second half through Jonathan Ibrahim. And they built up a 16-0 lead working their way into the final quarter of this game. So the fact that Patrician Brothers Fairfield were able to turn this thing around was just uh, was just completely bonkers and it was their captain A Arch that started it finding some finding an opportunity close to the line out of dummy half for he was helped by several of his teammates and I know we keep circling back to this point but they were just able to ride the momentum from that point on and you have to credit their own school uh, their own students and classmates that created such a buzz and such an atmosphere here at Leichhardt Oval and they gave their side a massive lift and it certainly put uh, the Hills outfit on the back foot as well defensively things just went from bad to worse as well that try there of course by Noah Funa was a you know an opportun opportunistic effort and we did credit the momentum when it came to that one. And then obviously here you see Miller just winding up from about the 15 meter line. He met five different tacklers close to that Hills try line and it didn't matter. It was a unbelievable stride for the line. Jordan Miller, one of the best forwards on the ground in this game. There's no doubt about that. And of course, his teammate, Josh Alhazen, the vice captain of that Patrician Brothers Fairfield outfit as well, was one of the other ones. And they were both able to find crucial match-winning tries for this team late in the grand final. And Cassius Tia had the last 10 or 15 minutes to forget, I suppose, put under all sorts of pressure there. It was incredible pressure and build-up from... Josh Alhazen and his full effort from minute one through to 60 was deserving of a match winning play like that. How about the angles that we've provided on community TV here in this Schoolboy Cup Grand Final as well. Alhazen with a moment he will never forget. Running away with the Premiership and look at those scenes. Scenes that will go down in the archives of the NRL for a long, long time to come. What a day. What a finish. Incredible scene still, 15 minutes after full time. There's Steve Monney in the middle of the shot. His contribution to the game of schoolboys football with photography. The official NRL photographer for more than 25 years. Great work. 
Where would we be, Phil, without the volunteers in our great game of rugby league? And they are not wiping the smiles off their face. Well, how do you return to class if you're one of these Pat students this afternoon, honestly? I think you just get on the bus and tell the busman to go nowhere near the school. What do you reckon? <laughs> you would be celebrating well into the night, wouldn't you? Let's go down now for the official match presentation. Good afternoon. I'm Tony Salerno, and on behalf of the NRL, I would like to welcome you to the official presentation of the Peter Mulholland Cup for 2022. Thank you to the fans in attendance and those watching on the Daily Telegraph live stream. I'm sure we'll all agree this game really lived up to the hype. One of the great finals in recent years. Congratulations to Patrician Brothers Fairfield and commiserations to Hill Sports High School. I would like the crowd to join me in congratulating both teams on a fantastic game. I'd like to introduce our official party, John Wilson, the NRL General Manager for Game Development, and also uh, Mel Mulholland, Heath Mulholland, and Ned Mulholland, the family of the late Peter Mulholland, which this cup is named after. So please uh, introduce my staff. I'd first like to call on the officials to receive their match medals on a great performance. Referee Kieran Casey. Touch Judge Brody Bari. And Touch Judge Nathan Hillier. Congratulations to the officials. It's now time for the runners-up medals. Hills were so dominant in that first half, but a steamrolling comeback from Fairfield Patricia Brothers, but they just pipped them right at the end. I'd like to call upon their captain, Billy Scott, number nine, to say a few words on behalf of Hill Sports High School. Uh, firstly, I'd just like to say um, a huge thanks to Paddy's, but um, it was everything I could have thought of that game, but um, yeah, we weren't lucky enough to get the chocolates at the end there. Uh, to John O'Dallas and the team at the NRL, um, the amount of work he's have done over the last few years to, I suppose, keep this competition running and um, keep us playing at the best grounds here in New South Wales, um, yeah, nothing goes un unseen. Uh, to the Daily Telegraph for the coverage you've had over the whole year and the articles, um, I think it really promotes the game and uh, it's good for school footy. Uh, to our coaching staff, Jonesy, Bronze, Mitch, um, our school, our principals, um, the work you've done for us over the past six years, I think we'll cherish for the rest of our lives. Um, this is something that I'll never forget and something that I'll forever cherish. Finally to our team, it's been a privilege to captain you and uh, yeah, today wasn't our day, but this is another lesson in life and I will go on to bigger and better things. Thank you. Billy Scott will also receive the medals on his team's behalf. It's now time for the player of the match. There could have been 34 players who would have been able to receive this award. But it came down right to the end. A charge down that led to the match winning try. The man of the match, number 12 for Patricia Brothers Fairfield, Josh Al Hazim. Congratulations, Josh.
While I've got Josh up here, I'm going to call Yeha as well. And can the captains come out and say a few words on behalf of the winning team? Firstly, I'd like to say thanks for Hills for a thrilling game. He's really did, made it tough for us. Um, thanks to our coaching staff, Mr. Frank, Mr. Berg, Mr. Morgan, Mr. Coluccio. He's done an amazing job this year in getting us here and winning this um, grand final. The boys, this has been the best two years of my life, come to this school, captain new boys, amazing team. Thanks to the parents coming out every week, supporting us and cheering for us. Thanks to the boys at the back there for cheering us on. Uh, uh, thanks to the NRL for covering the School Boys Cup, done an amazing job. And Fairfield's back on the map, boys. <laughs> I'll also call up the Precision Brothers Fairfield players to go and walk up and receive their medals. But before that, it's time to hand over the trophy. We have Mel Mulholland and Heath Mulholland, the family of the late Peter Mulholland, to provide Fairfield Pats with the Peter Mulholland Cup for 2022. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hang. So Hughes. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, your 2022 Peter Mole Holland Cup champions, Patrician Brothers Fairfield. That concludes the official presentation. Thank you for attending. Wow, what great pitches coming out of Leichhardt Oval. Can you believe the last time they were in this position, folks? It was 30 years ago, Phil. It was back in 1992. Six cups along the way. And today, that's their seventh. Yeah, what a wait. The wait is finally over, Peter. And it's been a, a hell of a long time coming, of course. They've produced some, uh, some outstanding NRL prospects along the way, and I get the feeling there's a few more in that, uh, in that 19 as well. I will leave you with these tremendous pitches, folks, from Leichhardt Oval. Well done to Frank Pritchard and Bill Burke, the assistance coach. It's your year. Ladies and gentlemen, they are the champions of the 2022 NRL Schoolboys Cup, Patrician Brothers of Fairfield. Well done. We'll see you again next year. Phil, thank you very much, mate. Thank Great you, job. Until next year, folks. Enjoy your footy. Bye for now.